Hey up folks, welcome to Lexi IS. In today's video, we'll be looking into a comprehensive and holistic view about Vijayanagar Empire. That is, we'll discuss the political aspects, administrative aspects, socio-economic, all right, art and culture, architecture, all of those. All right, let's get into the video where today we'll be discussing about the political aspects. All right. Now, see, for anything to be born, okay, necessary conditions has to be created. For example, say Magadha Empire, all right, the very first empire that India had. At that point of time, the dominant religion on that point was Hinduism or Brahmanism, all right. But the atrocity and orthodoxy had increased so much so, the society itself craved for a change, okay. Thus was born your Buddhism and Jainism. The society creates the necessary conditions for the emergence of a new system or a new order. Now we said Vijayanagar Empire beginning, right? That has to have, okay, the society or state had to create some situations, okay, for the emergence of Vijayanagar Empire. What was that? Now see, look at this. This entire, this zone, alright? Was your Delhi Sultanate, alright? At that point of time, Delhi Sultanate, okay, strong power, they held it at Delhi, alright? Now, they used to make sure that, alright, that they used to come to the down south, alright, for various reasons. First main reason is loot, plunder, okay, make them pay tax, right, all those things they used to do, right. One such thing was, see, first, when we say Delhi Sultanates coming to the southern regions, two predominant dynasties, one is your Kilgis, okay, another is your Tughlaqs. Alright, now what happens, they come to or they march down towards the south, alright. Now south here at that point of time, okay, was dominated by Eastern Gangas, Kakatiyas, of Warangal, Vaisalas and Kampilis, alright. Now this was their southern setup, while the time of Delhi Sultanate, okay. Now the Kilgis, what they used to do is, they used to march down south, thinking they'll come here, loot, plunder, alright, take huge amount of, for them to pay tax, go back and build their empire or Delhi Sultanate based on the riches, richness that they have just acquired. See now based on this, there is one story, okay, once the Kilji dynasty, they were coming here to Devgiri, right, before coming to Devgiri, they realized that Devgiri will also fight back, now they are going to march and come, right, initially when they were coming to Devgiri, the king there now decided that, okay, we have to also regroup and give an equal and opposite resistance, alright. The Kilgis, now they devised a new plan. See, numerically the soldiers wise, they were lesser in number compared to the Devgiri dynasty. So what they did was, they created a rumour, alright, they created a rumour telling 20,000 men, okay, a fresh batch of, okay, your soldiers, your arms, your support is coming for it just came from Delhi. Okay, they just created a rumor stating that. Right? Now what happened? The Kilji King he told that he told the soldier go to the northern region, okay, create a huge wave of sand cloud. Right? Like the rumor itself. Right? Create a huge wave of sand cloud. Seeing that, okay, looking at that here, the kings thought that this was the dust, okay, this was the rampant that was created by the large arrival of army and armaments, okay. This created a fear in their minds, okay. The Kilgis won psychological warfare before even entering and come, before even entering and doing a physical war, right. Fine, they enter, they loot it, okay, take all those things, they go back. Alright, then another version, okay, another point of time in history, they will try to enter uh, through Eastern Gangas and enter the Kakatiya kingdom. But initially, the Kakatiyas will drive them away, right. See, the Kakatiyas here are having the natural advantage because they are very well versed in the concept of monsoon, right. The Delhi Sultan at that time came during the point of monsoon and they didn't know how to retry. They didn't know how to fight. The Kakatiyas used the advantage of monsoon very well and drove them back. Right? So which meant the ones that went back didn't go back and keep quiet. They will hope for vengeance or vengeful. 
so they will keep on trying to keep on attacking the southern regions and they will try to take the loot and plunder so it had created a scenario like the northern parts okay was of sultanate rule and the southern parts now wanted okay the southern parts were now wanting to stay away from this group or the majority being because they used to loot or it plunder mostly their space of attack would be temples all right now this section the southern section they wanted to isolate from them build a natural warrior build a natural frontier against the sultanate attack all right amidst that chaos right the chaos that was created by delhi sultanate in the southern region for example your hoysalas kanbutili all of them okay every single one delhi sultanate was trying to come in wage war loot plunder make them pay tax right they were getting fed up right like we said before the orthodoxy or the extremities that hinduism had created created way or paved way for development of buddhism and jainism now here in this case okay the extremities of delhi sultanate created the necessary condition for the new empire to be born that is your vijayanagar empire okay now the claim says vijayanagar empire was founded by two brothers harihara and bukkaraya they were the okay soldiers or they served in the hoysala army or kamyuti that is debated but it is said that they were children of the attacks of delhi sultanate meaning what meaning they have faced first hand okay you as to they had naturally been present there only to avoid the delhi sultanates only to make sure that they do not march south right thus they created a new empire on the borders on the southern borders of tungabhadra river that is vijaya nagar all right this is your brothers harihara and bukkaraya all right vijaya brothers vijaya in kannada means victory right thus the name vijaya nagara which means city of victory in direct translation vijaya means victory nagara means city so it is city of victory all right they created the city of victory on the southern border of tungabhadra river all right now when you see the allegiance right when you see vijayanagar right they lean more towards the okay eastern part or they were most concentrated in karnataka regions right when we say vijayanagar right it falls under karnataka right not just present day karnataka right earlier version of region okay today it is major version is of karnataka but earlier okay the earlier version of karnataka that is at their point of time when harihara and bukaraya started there was no such thing called karnataka right or specifically named said as karnataka right today's karnataka present region okay the central and eastern region that is leaning towards andhra pradesh region okay was the vijayanagar thus there are claims of them being a lineage of kannada okay the language or linguistic that they knew could be kannada and telugu all right so both of these are seen why because the region is like that all right now apparently it appeared very diverse right multi linguistic or at least in this case as of, you know bilingual right next look at the map here look at the highlight this is your tungabhadra river on the south of this flourished okay the situation had created and necessitated for your vijaya nagara all right the vijayanagar kingdom look at the tributaries tungabhadra look at the highlights All right now let's move on now when you say vijayanagar empire right we'll take it back to a little bit of ancient history as we're comparing ancient and medieval history all right 
just to get an idea as to whether is this something new which we are discussing so is this everything new that is happening in Vijayanagar or has it already happened look at the name is Vijayanagar Empire so something of an empire indicates that multiple dynasties will rule it right has this happened before in history yes that is your Magadhan right Magadhan Empire was also ruled by multiple dynasties right for example your Haryanga dynasty Right, Chishunga dynasty, your Nanda dynasty, right? These were all dynasties under one Magadan Empire, right? After this came Mauryan Empire, right? Now, what is the difference between empire and dynasty? See, the, the difference between Magadan Empire and Mauryan Empire is drastic, right? They could have continued the process, but when I say dynasties, okay, they all ruled around the same place. The trade, the rituals, everything they carried along stuck to this thing, Magadan Empire, all right. So, when we say Vijayanagar Empire, all right, now that is a zone, okay, geographical zone of influence where multiple dynasties ruled and they all ruled in swear of, in allegiance of Vijayanagar Empire, all right. Now, the first dynasty to rule was Sangam dynasty, right? Under Sangam dynasty will come your Harihara and Bukka, right? The ones who founded the Vijayanagar Empire, all right? Now, they ruled from 1334 to 1484. Look at the timeline. 1336, from your Sangam, it began to Aravedu, 1650. Almost for a year of 300 years, they have ruled. Okay, if an empire is flourishing for 300 years, imagine the influence it will have on its land, on its people, okay, and has it, okay, anything that they followed then, do we still follow it now, okay, all those will be discussed here, alright, so the first dynasty to do begin was your Sangap dynasty under which your founders Harihara and Bukka will come, okay, next is your Saluva dynasty, alright, here it was founded by Narasimha. Okay. Next is your Thuluva dynasty. Okay. The most important things in all come here. By that we mean Krishna Devaraya. Okay. Under whom Vijayanagar Empire went to peaks or it reached to Zenith. Alright. Next is your last of the Vijayanagar Empire. That is Aravidu dynasty. Here one of the, here it was founded by Tirumala. But one more thing if you have to remember here is that Aliya Ramaraya. Okay. With the end of him ended the mighty Vijayanagar Empire. Okay. So let's look ahead. Let's just look at an overview of Vijayanagar Empire. Like I said, Vijayanagar Empire Okay, in modern day Karnataka, alright, in modern day Karnataka occupies central as well as eastern parts, alright. Also, it occupies regions, okay, which were belonging to Mysore, alright, at that point of time it was called Mysore, right. Hyderabad, remember Nizam of Hyderabad, Nizam al Mulk, right. Came down, March or founded the independent kingdom of Hyderabad, right? Hyderabad. And they both were under Madras presidency. Okay. So now this particular area, whatever we are calling Vijayanagar, okay, has influence of all these three. Understanding? How is it having influence even now? Let's look at it. But as of now, know this, this much, okay? I have a look at this, Vijayanagar Empire, almost 300 years, alright, founded by Harihara Bukka, most importantly, look at here, with the blessings of Guru Vidyaranya, right, of Sangam dynasty, basically, to see here, Vijayanagara, city of south, uh, city of Vijayanagara, city of victory, okay, on the southern bank of Tungabhadra River, as we have discussed, most important point I want you to observe is this. Okay, 
they were followers of Shaivism. Okay, Virupaksha was their family god. All right, and they also came under the influence of Vaishnavism. Shiva continued to be worshipped. What is the important thing? Today? The one thing with Vijayanagara is that the Delhi Sultanate at that point of time made a point to attack, plunder, okay, the Deccan states or the southern states, and also destroy the temples on the way. Or at least that's what is told. Okay, so now the people or the kingdoms wanted to make sure that they built a barrier. Okay, built a barrier against the Delhi Sultanates. Like for example, they wanted to build a barrier. Okay, let's consider this is southern states. They want to build a barrier against the Muslim rule, and here they wanted to create this Hindu rule. By Hindu rule, okay, here religion played an important role. One reason why. Because whenever the Delhi Sultanates came, they started destroying temples, looting temples, okay, which wanted them, okay. The necessitated conditions was that now they wanted a zone of control where Hinduism or Hindus could worship, could follow their religion, okay, build their temples, build their socio-economic scenarios around it, right. So now you see Vijayanagar, right. What will you most first associate? Temples, right. Temple religion, okay, religion associated trade, okay. Here the trade flourished in this area based on their religion, based on their socio-economic condition. Vijayanagar, they they made sure they were religiously tolerant, as in they allowed or they patronized multiple religions: Hinduism, Hinduism, Peshaivism, Vaishnavism, all right, Christianity. That is, let's come to this Christianity. How, okay, then. Their following of Islam, basically, they were religiously pretty much tolerant. All right, look at this. The Christianity part. Let's discuss in a while. There was constant conflict between Vijayanagar Empire and Bahamani Kingdom. Right, one of the constant struggles that Vijayanagar Empire had to put up or fight was with your had to fight was with your Deccan Sultanate. Don't get confused with the name. Earlier we said Delhi Sultanate. Right now we are telling Deccan Sultanate nothing but your Bahamani kingdoms. Okay, over Raichur though. Okay, basically this zone was the conflict between your Vijayanagar Empire and Bahamani Kingdom. All right, next. Next. Now we said something about Christianity. Right. Let's keep it ahead. Now let's come to our pinnacle, Krishna Devaraya. The timeline is fifteen not nine to fifteen twenty nine. All right. The most look at the thing here. The most important Vijayanagar king from Tuluva dynasty, also known as Andhra Bhoja. See when we spoke that right two days Karnataka. Okay, the Vijayanagar Empire comprised of two days Karnataka and also parts of Andhra Pradesh, which means they were closer towards Andhra Pradesh. The linguistic could have been both Kannada and Telugu. See. Andhra Bhoja, right? Here they can be associated with both Kannada in a linguistic manner, okay, and Telugu, right? Next, waged war against Bahamani kingdom, kept them under check. Yes, liberated Muhammad Shah, right? And then assume this title. He is also the author of. Manu Charitamu, right? One interesting feature of Krishna Devaraya is that he had eight eminent scholars or Ashta Digajas at his royal court. Okay, which means eight gems. All right, we'll look who were they, what were they doing. Okay, and right now, see in the previous case we discussed something about he even being tolerant towards Christians or Christianity, right? Look at the timeline: fifteen not nine to fifteen twenty nine of Krishna Devaraja, right? Now look at this. At the same point of time, somewhere around fifteen not five is when your Portuguese come, right? Fourteen ninety eight is when sea route is discovered to India, new sea route, right? Fifteen not five is somewhere the timeline where, all right? The Portuguese will send their governor general to establish a factory in India, right? Even to them, Krishna Devaraya, okay, was tolerant and allowed them to practice their own religion. That's what we meant in the 
previous slide when we said he was religiously tolerant the southern region was more tolerant to follow their own religious okay attributions right they did not have any specific thing that you have to follow hindu you have to follow okay brahmanism you have to follow islam you have to follow christianity nothing as such okay people are free to follow their own religions customs traditions all right with here and there conditions do stand out all right in a larger basis this is what the scenario was all right next we spoke something about ashta digajas right ashta means eight right the eight scholars who adorned his court are with the names one name i want you to remember tenali ramakrishna why see vijayanagar empire right we said it existed somewhere around 1300s to 1600s yes somewhere on the span of 300 years right now what is the timeline 2022 yeah look at the difference in the timeline right it is way back right compared to now yes sir no now when it is this much timeline gap also still we said in the very starting do we have any influences of the kingdom that ruled for 300 years right even today aren't there some books such as tenali raman stories okay for kids this is that tenali ramkrishna the stories tenali ramkrishna and krishna devaraya stories that we have for our children for our generation even today this 300 years of ruling okay the history in each or one way will still continue that we still have the influence of this 300 years in our present day okay now we use it for moral stories back then also they used it for moral stories or etc all right this is the influence that this much of a land this of an empire had or has and will have on our generation right this is why the importance of history okay it is extremely important to know history why because of these things i'm not telling just one thing only roman stories that you have to know but that is what it does to a place it is what it does to a generation okay it influences the past always tries to influence the future be it in a good way or in a bad way all right look at this with the nali raman stories all right this is pretty popular now all right next we know all this information how how do we know all this information that this king was there he did so and so he had eight poets or he had his kingdom exact to the south of tungabhadra right he had allegiance or his linguism was somewhere related to andhra people how do we know that okay that is with the foreign travelers okay we have did another video on okay foreign travelers who visited india during medieval india that will be there in the description box please check that out too all right next look at this people from different countries morocco italy persia russia italy portugal right venice all of them visited during the period of vijayanagar and they have written vast number of resources and given detailed information about the administration political structure economic structure social cultural all right all that about your vijayanagar empire that served as a hand guide for them also why because let's say in the previous slide we discussed three not five portuguese were to come right so they will have to know about the local rulers how this scenario is how the condition is in india all right it served as a handbook for them it serves as a handbook for us it will serve as a handbook for the future generations all right so all the information that we have about them that point of time today is because of their works all right next we spoke about the bahmani kings or deccan sultans please do not confuse it with delhi sultans it is deccan sultans nothing but your bahmani sultans all right they were a culmination of see five places ahmednagar bijapur berar bidar and golconda okay together formed bahmani kingdom conflict conf uh, constant conflict with vijayanagar empire yeah 
now. In 1500s, alright, we had one of the storm king, we just discussed Krishna Devaraya, right? He always made sure that he kept in check of the Bahamanis. Alright? Who is Krishna Devaraya? Okay? His successes were not as efficient of this person. That is your Krishna Devaraya. Okay? Down the line comes Aliya Ramaraya. Alright? Aliya Ramaraya. Okay? Here the word in Kannada, Aliya means son-in-law. Okay? Ramaraya was the son-in-law of Krishna Devaraya. Okay? Now, one thing you have to know, the difference between Krishna Devaraya and Ramaraya is that, see, we said Krishna Devaraya was a religiously tolerant person. He involved both Hindus and Muslims in his administration. Okay? Allowed people to practice their religious practices without any hindrances. Right? Whereas Aliya Ramaraya, he dismissed all the loyalists in the administration when he came to the power because, okay, he was not made the king, but he was made a nominal king or he was just a regent overlooking for the minor son who was at that point of time not yet able to rule. Alright, Aliya Ramaraya now was made a virtual king, but he had the real power in his hands. Alright, Aliya Ramaraya, as we said, he, used, he dismissed the loyal agents of the administration. Okay, Aliya Ramaraya appointed two generals called as Gilani brothers of Muslim nobility. Okay. Now what happened? There arises a war between combined forces of Bahamanis right, against Vijayanagar. And by Vijayanagar we mean the region now is Aliya Ramaraya. Okay. Combined forces of Bahamanis and Vijayanagar come to a fight near Talikota. Alright. Now what happens? The two generals Aliya Ramaraya had appointed turned sides. Okay. Combined with Bahamanis and defeated the Vijayanagar Empire. See when you look at the statistics, Vijayanagar was more strong numerically compared to the Bahamanis in the soldier strength and might. But because of his own generals turning against them, going opposite to him and then making a deal with them proved very disastrous for the mighty Vijayanagar Empire. Okay. Thus, the most epitome peak, okay, whatever the 300 years of rule was there, ended with Battle of Talikota. Okay. Aliya Ramaraya was defeated and killed. Bahamanis, okay, segregated Vijayanagar into themselves, among themselves. Alright. Look at this. The Deccan Sultanate. By that we mean Bahamanis. Right. This is the Vijayanagar Empire. Look at Tallikota here. Look at the highlight. 1565 Battle of Tallikota defined and decided the future of Vijayanagar Empire. Alright. The 300 year old rule came to an end with 1565, your battle of Talikota. Alright? See now this 1500s is a pretty game changing for India. This period of 1500 saw two things in the first half and in the second half. 1526, first battle of Panipat. Okay? Set up the new rule of Mughal rule in India which was to change the fate of 1565 ended your Vijayanagar rule with Battle of Talikota. Alright, both events, first half of 1500 set up a new rule, second, on, second half of 1500 ended a major rule. Okay, look at it, as we spoke, successes of Krishna Devaraya will be the combined force of Ahmednagar, Vijapur, Golgunda, Bidar declared war on Vijayanagar. That is on Aliya Ramraya and one Battle of Talikota ended the Vijayanagar Empire. Okay. Which meant Vijayanagar was once again okay, put under loot, plunder, killing, right? All those kind of things. Next, 
See, in today's terms, right, we spoke something about Vijayanagar Empire that was somewhere around, we spoke the time when was 1300 to 1600s. Yes, we also spoke about the influence, what it was, one of the things was Tenali Raman's story. Yeah, right now when we take Vijayanagar Empire, right, when we have to create Karnataka, okay, that is 1956, state reorganization was to be formed, right, state reorganization was happening along with that, basically, your states was to be okay made based on linguistic manner one such thing right and now when Karnataka had to be formed right Vijayanagar at that point Vijayanagar empire's influence on Karnataka was pretty strong but the region was look at the region here this region this region and this region I wanted to look at these three this particular one belonged to your Hyderabad city all right, this belonged to the Mysore. This was to your Hyderabad. This was to your Mysore. And in turn, they came under Madras presidency. Okay, when this zone got integrated with this zone. See, as I told, there is cultural uniqueness between both of them. Right, one common thread is that, yes, they might have been under a similar rule. For example, Vijayanagar rule. But still, the conditions here and here were different. When they had to be bought in, they couldn't just be clubbed together and made it equal, right? Which means this zone, right? This zone had to have some special features because they had experience. We will discuss in further videos as to what was the reason that this region, okay? The Hyderabad region or Hyderabad Karnataka region, when it came under in your Karnataka, Hyderabad Karnataka region had to be given some special provisions, We'll discuss this in the upcoming videos but this Hyderabad Karnataka region had to have special provisions because of its uniqueness again here uniqueness what it is we will discuss later this Hyderabad Karnataka region in 2019 okay was renamed as Kalyana Karnataka all right Hyderabad Karnataka region that is 1956 Hyderabad Karnataka region 2019 became Kalyana Karnataka all right now year 2021 which is discussed right as of now 2021 okay, there was one thing that happened on 2nd october 2021 that is they created all right the 31st district of karnataka that being vijaya nagar Okay, your Bedlari, another district of Karnataka, was carved out and Vijayanagar district was created. Alright, now when this Vijayanagar district is created, just now we spoke something about 300 year old history, whose tradition, whose influences we still have. Doesn't that glory city, okay, have to be, you know, reminisced, remembered and carried forward? For the same reason, Vijayanagar district, the 31st district was created from the Carvings of Bellari on 2nd October 2021. Okay. Now, a new main city. Okay. For spade. See, up until now, we never discussed one thing. Right. Hampi. The capital city of Vijayanagar. Alright. See, if Vijayanagar, we say, right, the capital city was Hampi. If I say Hampi, the one word that will come into your mind is temples. Remnants ruins or remains of Hampi city, right? Hampi at this point of time, okay, had become old town. Now they had created something called as Osa Pete. That is Osa Pete, indicating new city, right? This was to act as an opening. This was to act as an entrance for people coming from the Western Guards or Western said, all right, from here. Hosepete. All right, now this gained importance and thus Hosepete is in Vijayanagar. In your Hampi. All right. Now, this is the new snippets that was regarding. Okay, again, by any issue we were to create, right? There are always when district of 
21st district of Vijayanagar was to be created. Multiple controversy, criticism, right? Few people for, few people against Ultima. This is the idea into that. The Vijayanagar district, 31st district. So, what does it comprise of? Usupete, Kampili, okay? All these regions. Ballari district, right? Take it. Ballari district carved out Vijayanagar Empire, okay? Ballari district, Vijayanagar district, right? Your Vijayanagar in the Karnataka map. Now that is it for the political part of Vijayanagar Empire, okay? If you like our videos, please do give a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and share it along with your friends. Thank you.